In this video, I'm going to run through the ID process for the ever so popular Chanterelle mushrooms, and I will also be giving hints and tips on how to find them as well. In the UK, there are various species of Chanterelles that grow. They are broken up into two genuses the Cantharellus genus and the Craterellus genus. And today we're going to be focusing on the Cantharellus genus. All members of the Cantharellus genus are mycorrhizal, which means that they have a symbiotic relationship with specific types of trees. And all members of the Cantharellus genus are edible. Numerous species are quite rare and it's going to be unlikely that you're going to come across them. However, there's one species which is more common than most others, and that's Cantharellus sabarius. A Cantharellus sabarius is a bright yellow, egg yellow chanterelle. It has a flat cap with age, it becomes more depressed. On the underside, they have what's called hymenium. What differentiates chanterelles from your stereotypical gill fungi is that the hymenium which look like gills they're not true gills they're more like wrinkles and this is your key to identifying and differentiating a member of the cantharellus genus from other gilled fungi so they've got wrinkles rather than true gills and then the gills are pale yellow to yellow and they run decurrently down the stipe as well. The stipe is yellow to pale yellow and tapering towards the base. Inside the mushroom, when you cut them in half, the whole mushroom is fleshy right through to the base of the stipe and the flesh is white. That fleshy aspect of the mushroom is also another feature which is going to help you distinguish it from another potential look-alike uh, which has a hollow stipe, the false chanterelle, uh, hygrophoropsis, there's various species in the hygrophoropsis genus and the hygrophoropsis species they have true gills unlike a chanterelle. So one of your primary features to distinguish them is the fact that they have true gills. They're a little bit more orange and a bit more flimsy. They're not as robust as chanterelles. And inside the stipe as well, the stipe for the false chanterelles is hollow and they are very rounded uh, to funnel shaped. Whereas the chanterelles, the cap edges can be inrolled, but generally the margin with age is going to become a bit more wavy and the shape of the fungi is misshapen. It's not perfectly symmetrical, it's not nice and round like the false chanterelles. And the false chanterelles, the edibility is dubious. There's some data that suggests that with some people they're slightly hallucinogenic. Uh, they're just one generally to stay away from they're not going to cause too many issues unlike the jack-o-lantern which is highly poisonous and the jack-o-lantern is another bright yellow to orange fungi typically it grows in groups and in, in quite dense clusters and it's a much larger fungi than the chanterelle and it also grows on deadwood too so it's saprobic sometimes you'll find it growing on the deadwood of roots of trees underneath the bases of tree stumps so this the, the wood that it's growing on could be underground and it may look like they are uh, growing straight up from the ground there is potential for you to muddle them up there However, the jack-o'-lanterns being a much larger fungi, more robust, they also have true gills as well. And the smell with jack-o'-lanterns is uh, strongly farinaceous to quite rancid. They don't have a pleasant smell. The chanterelles, however, particularly Cantharellus sabarius, they've got a really lovely smell. They've got a fruity apricot type smell, a really pleasant smell. So the smell, the size, and the fact that um, jack-o'-lanterns have true gills is going to help you distinguish any jack-o'-lanterns you may come across and uh, misconceive as a chanterelle. 
Cantharellus sabarius gets its Latin name Cantharellus from the word Cantharus, which used to be a bowl in churches where people would go to wash their hands, face and feet before saying their peace with God. And a canthus is something that was used for uh, purifying people. It's called ablution, where you would purify yourself before saying your peace with God. So chanterelles are also known to be purifying. And there's a recent study where an extract from chanterelles was applied to wounds on rats. And the extract that was used, it healed the wounds rapidly and prevented infections from occurring. So they're antibacterial and they found that they promote collagen production in the skin as well. So chanterelles, their Latin name, uh, their ancient Latin name, Cantharus, purification, and it still rings true today with scientific studies showing that they are also purifying, preventing bacteria from forming and promoting regeneration. Chanterelles, they really like to grow on acid soils in acidic conditions. And to find soils that are acidic, there's certain features you can look for that are going to help indicate the soil quality. I look for heathland habitats and I look for the underlying geology to be sand. And from that point then I know that the soil conditions are going to be ideal for chanterelles. Once I've found the right habitat with the right soils, then I need to find the right tree species which they grow with. In the southeast here, I almost only find them with beech trees. However, they do grow with birch as well, occasionally oak, um, but generally they are mycorrhizal with deciduous trees and the ideal tree you would be looking for, the most common tree, particularly in the southeast, is beech. So, after that brief introduction of the habitats, let's go out and take a look at some of the features I'm looking for which indicates the pH of the habitat that I'm in and we can touch on the identification of a couple of trees as well. One of the main types of plants I'm looking for which indicate the pH of the soil is heather. Heather is a great indicator of soil pH. They like acidic soils, so they like a pH from about 4.5 to 5.5, which is the same type of pH that you're going to find chanterelles in. Some of the grasses can also be a good indicator of the soil pH, and they are very tricky to identify if you can identify or recognise some species of grasses, uh, be looking for species like fescues, um, species within the festuca genus, uh, because they are tolerant of harsh environmental conditions, so nutrient poor soils, droughty conditions, uh, which is what you get in heathland habitats. When you're walking around the landscape, you might find patches of sand as well and if you see patches of sand generally the soils are going to be acidic so the actual soil itself can help indicate what the pH could be in the location you're in. The season for chanterelles is from around summer solstice right through until November you can find them. Typically in the southeast it's a very dry part of the country so when you're looking for them, you're going to really need to time your hunt in conjunction with precipitation. And even then, there's no guarantee that they're going to actually amount into a substantial meal. Often I find them and they don't make it past pinhead stages, particularly the last couple of years where the summer's been so dry. Once you've narrowed down a habitat where you believe chanterelles might grow, then your next thing is going to be to find trees that they might grow with. So as I said before, we're looking for deciduous trees and in particular, we're looking for beech and potentially birch as well. But I would certainly in the southeast of England be concentrating my hunt around beech trees. Let's go see if we can find some beech. Over here we have a silver birch. Birches are relatively easy to identify. They have this silvery bark which is split horizontally and often at the bases there'll be the bark will be split vertically 
in kind of diamond formations. They tend to have a preference to acidic soils, however you will find them on alkaline soils as well, uh, but certainly their preference is acidic soils. Uh, but they aren't good indicators of the pH of the soil, unlike some of the other plants I've shown you earlier. Beech trees are another tree that's relatively easy to identify, particularly when there's foliage on them. And they have smooth bark, they grow with typically with just one trunk. The leaves on beech trees are overall with pointed tips, slightly wavy on the margins. Um, one of the unique features of beech leaves is that they have hairs on the margin. As you should be able to see just there. Often I'll look around on the floor and that can indicate the species of tree that I'm under and these are beech nuts. Because it's so dry, I'm just heading down the hill and I'm trying to find areas where water is going to run off to and collect because that is what's going to increase my chances of finding some fruiting chanterelles. We did have rain just over a week ago, so the rain acts as a, a trigger event which induces the fungi to fruit and whether they actually fruit into a substantial size is another question. It depends on the amount of rainfall you have. But we've had enough rain to trigger them into fruiting, so this is a good time for me to be going out and hunting. This area here is a little catch basin. Water runs off the top of the hill and trickles down here and builds up and collects. And there's a few little pockets down here um, where, where the water's going to collect and straight away, I can see there's some chanterelles. So there we have it, we've found some chanterelles. However, where it's so dry, they are not growing into a, a substantial fruiting body. And you can see here, they're slightly pale as well. Um, so they're struggling with the harsh environmental conditions and if we get a bit more rain I think these will certainly start to develop. Uh, we're due some later on today and next week so these will start to develop into something that's a little bit more substantial than the pinheads they are now. There is heather here too and we have got the fine leaf fescues which is what the chanterelles are growing right next to and although chanterelles are mycorrhizal with beech which we're next to and um, I would also think that they form relationships with some of the grasses and some of the heather as well. We did find chanterelles today and we used all our dexterity to hunt for them. We got ourselves into the right habitat, the right soil conditions, we used the right indicator plants and we found the right trees as well. We've had the right weather conditions, we had a bit of rain to induce fruiting, not enough though to turn them into a substantial fruiting body which would be a decent meal on my plate. I hope you enjoyed the video and the mushroom hunting and I will see you in the next one.